This week I'm going to be talking about divorce matters, divorcing emotionally, knowing your worth and the practical side of divorce as well. Welcome to the Mindfuckery podcast, which is Feedspot's fifth must listen to podcast on emotional abuse. I'm your host Elizabeth and in here we explore areas others are fear to tread. Through my own personal journey I know how much this hurts and how confusing life becomes. So many questions, no closure and no real answers. I've been a woundologist for over 20 years. I'm the unintentional author of Finding Lily, the A to Z of emotional abuse and divorce matters. I help you clear past life wounds, ancestral trauma and this life wounding. And as the founder of the Inner Healing Sanctuary, I've created Wound Talking, The Original Wound and Quantum Glow. I'm on a mission to help educate as many people as I can on the effects of trauma on our lives and our children's lives and healing the wounds of our mothers and our fathers. It stops here, it stops now, it stops with us. So welcome along for the journey of a lifetime. And you are very, very welcome. I do apologise. I have this feeling my microphone might be on the way out. I did think it was a bit muffled last week and it seems to be doing something very similar again this week. So that's on my shopping list. This week, I wanted to talk about Divorce Matters. Divorce Matters is a book that I wrote over maybe a three-year period and it might have been longer actually. Anyway, I, it was started off as a book that was going to be called Three Things You Should Never Do, Divorcing a Narcissist. It was in a lull period between me finishing my book, The A to Z of Emotional Abuse, it being with the editor and having the edits backwards and forwards and the designer who was putting it all together. And then I threw this into the arena. I'd finished with my divorce. It was over and done with. And I thought, okay, now I can use it in a practical way my experience what I've been through it was the second time I'd done it and it was a journey and it was interesting what it did for me was looking at different ways of healing recognizing different wounds um, it was the time that I really nailed down how to deal with the rumination I was experiencing and it was an experience that's all I can say so from the back of that as I said this in this lull period the divorce was over it had all been agreed it took three years to get through I'd written this book The A to Z of Emotional Abuse during that time and it had all gone off to this wonderful woman who was editing it for me and I had a guy in the background that was doing all the putting it all together and so I sat down and wrote this book three things you should never do divorcing a narcissist and then it sat on my laptop I'm fairly sure I fully wrote one and two was nearly finished three I was playing around with and I just left it there. Also we went into lockdown as well didn't we and then various things I can't think what happened. I think just sat there and then I was away when we were allowed to travel again and I said something and somebody a couple of people reached out and said oh my god I really need this book. I'm really struggling with this divorce. It's been years. It's still hanging around and I was like okay I really need to get this back out and that's when it transformed actually into Divorce Matters and what I did was I did this practical guide because I'd done it before I knew the manipulation this was really about healing and divorcing emotionally so that you can then step in in a more powerful and stronger way to the negotiation side and knowing what your worth is I've done a couple of YouTube videos on this they're not called ROI but I think the title images have got that I've got a, a sales background I was, I've been in sales far too many years but I didn't sell in the conventional way I just created or had really good relationships with people and uh, and they bought for me I just created relationships and I was really interested in people and uh, you know and that that's that's how it worked so ROI is return on investment it's the amount that you put in to selling a product or starting up a company or investing in something so you you're committing something you're committing your time time and your money and your energy to source or start a new company or business or a new service you're sourcing this you're finding the information out you're then investing time and money putting that together and the ROI is the return on that investment so it's what you're going to get back and how quickly your projections are going to be etc so we've got three three elements that were in my head that's why I want to talk about divorcing emotionally the return on investment and the, the healing is 
Is that what I said at the beginning? I can't remember now. I wrote this book, as I said, and it's split into two. The first section is five chapters. Well, actually, it's more than that. It's five sections, five main sections covering children, covering the real cost of divorce. Just trying to find the contents page now. And my suggestion is that you divorce emotionally before you actually, or you actually can do that while you're working through this book. So we've got children, spousal support, assets, the cost of divorce, emotional issues. And I'd put a checklist in there and I've put a financial statements. So you can start thinking, you know, are they shuffling money around? What are they doing? I talk about emotional abuse and, ab- and about divorcing emotional, emotional divorce. And I talk about how to do that. Divorcing emotionally means that you no longer have an emotion towards that person. You can hear their name and you don't squeeze inside. It's like breaking the trauma bond. They have no control over you moving forward. And this is why for me, it's so important to divorce emotionally because you're in a stronger position. You're not being manipulated. You're not agreeing to things. And I've also got a section in there on how to negotiate. I've got something in there about, you know, working out what's really important to the emotional abuser or the person that you're divorcing. It could be just that, but it really is geared to emotional abuse. These relationships are so deep rooted and the pain runs deep. For me, it ran deep into my soul. And this confusion of not knowing what I'd done wrong, not knowing, although I knew the relationship was breaking down and it had been breaking down over a long period of time or a year at least, or even actually not long after we got back from getting married, you know, if I really am honest and I do talk about being honest and these honest conversations that you have with yourself, which is so powerful and healing, it was probably then. But I'd made this commitment you know I'd invested in this relationship so my return on investment was the fake future that I was being told about how we were so perfect together how we were going to set up half of the year in one country and half of the year in another country in fact it was living abroad permanently but that wasn't what I wanted because of my family I wanted to be around them so I negotiated a a 50-50 split my return was going to be the future that I had so my investment was my time and my money, my heart and my soul into that relationship. That might resonate with you, might be something that you did. My return was everything I had going into that relationship. When I saw the red flags, I was refocused. I was taken back around that cycle of abuse. I was put back on that pedestal and I was shown the fake future again. And I was like, okay, I'm going to override this because the return on my investment is going to be the future. So I wrote off a lot of stuff, handing out money and paying for things that should have been paid for equally and then being told that I didn't pay for anything which was a bit of a smack in the mouth if I'm completely honest because one I did and then two towards the end of the relationship I didn't have any money because I was paying for everything else and the things like the rent that was supposed to be split I'd have to remind and remind and remind for this payment can you transfer that money can you transfer that money and then I would take it out of my savings and pay for it and then I had no savings left. So that is where the financial coercion comes in and the and coercive control where your finances are controlled to the point that you either haven't got any money left or any saving. So this investment of time, money, energy, everything, heart and soul goes into this and you're working towards this fake future. All of a sudden that comes crashing down and I was left, this was my personal experience, wondering what I did wrong and why I wasn't good enough. And that cycle, I got trapped in that loop, that trauma bond that was there. I couldn't understand what was going on. I didn't understand. I'd given everything. I'd given up a business. I'd given up a time to help him build his business. I'd help him creatively and I encouraged him to write books and I took time out of my work environment to support him and travel with him, meaning that I couldn't work. And it was just such a mess. And that's where I was left. 
left. I was left in such a mess. So detangling from those emotions was something I was able to do, but it took me a while. And I help people and I have been helping people for years working with their wounds, but I couldn't help myself because I was right in the middle of this mind fuckery. I was being told one thing and then something else was happening. I was being told that he couldn't speak to me after a certain time because he was tired and all this was happening. When I said, look, I just want to go no contact. Stupidly, I didn't realise this at the time. It was a huge learning curve for me. I stupidly said, look, I just need some time to think. I need to turn everything off. I can't communicate with you at the moment. And then all of a sudden, I was getting messages saying, let me support you. We're supposed to be together. What else did he say? He was saying, I shouldn't be going through this alone and he should be there to support me. There was another time, oh, it was leading up to Christmas. Well, I And he said to me, oh, I've booked to go away at Christmas. I was really confused, but you're leading me to believe that you want to spend that time with me. And now you're telling me that you've booked to go away. His excuse was, I didn't know what you were doing, but you didn't ask me what I was doing. And so it was a complete mash. I mean, that was really early on. And this divorcing emotionally took me a long time to realise that that is what I needed to do. I need to cut the ties. I needed to break the trauma bond that I didn't know was there. And I need to detangle from all this information. I needed to reframe a lot of stuff that I'd been told. I needed to dump all the wounds that he'd given me that were his and he'd handed them to me and told me that we had the same wounding. That's rubbish. That's your stuff. My, I have my own. I don't need to take on yours as well. So I had to do that as well. But I really suffered with rumination and I would get caught up for seriously about five or six days and then I'd be able to ground myself and somehow get myself out of it until one day I was actually running an energy course and I realized that during that time I was actually more grounded and not going into rumination as quickly I was more in my body and that is one of the keys divorcing emotionally means you've got no feeling towards them you can hear their name and you don't jump very possibly suffering with complex post-traumatic stress disorder opposed to post-traumatic stress which a lot of people are told they've got you haven't you've got complex because these relationships are constantly constantly traumatizing you the traumatic events that are happening aren't just one they're multiple it might happen multiple times a day it might happen multiple times a week it might happen multiple times a month it isn't just one occasion and what then happens coming out of the relationships is all of these memories are a big mush of goo and if you look at the caterpillar the caterpillar is such a beautiful example of what's going on so when the caterpillar puts its protection its layer of protection it weaves it it grows into it and it's surrounded it's cocooned in this chrysalis and then what happens within it is that everything breaks down and if you were to break it open during that process you would get this goo it resembles nothing it doesn't resemble a caterpillar it doesn't resemble a butterfly it's just goo loopy what's happening inside is this rebuild and they have done research and they've trained caterpillars i don't know how but they trained caterpillars and when they broke out the chrysalis and became a butterfly that butterfly was still able to do the tricks that the caterpillar did and so it's then ingrained in its psyche and the other thing that i love about the butterfly is that once it breaks free because we think right we're broken free i'm now I'm going to conquer the world and I'm going to change everything or do these drastic things. The butterfly doesn't. The butterfly knows that its wings are still wet and delicate. So it sits there. It takes the time out to rest and dry out and strengthen. So it's gone through this whole metamorphosis and transformation, this huge transformation, like the one that you're embarking on. And then once it's broken free, it doesn't fly off straight away. It sits and it rests. So divorcing emotionally, for me is one of the key elements to this you then are able to step into your power you are then able to say uh 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 no mister no missus i'm sorry i want all of this information i need all your financials 
oh there's a gap here and I'm going to ask for you to tell me why there's a gap in this financial declaration or whatever it is. It gives you the power to be really present in that process. One person that read this was a divorce consultant. She picked it up and she said to me, oh my gosh, it's like a way of documenting the whole process. It's quite a chunky book. I picked the size to be like a filofax type thing. So it's got enough space in there. I've also put in a bullet index so that if you write something down, right, say you're making notes on a page and you're writing stuff and you need to keep, oh, that's really important information. You can go and index that in a bullet index so you can find it it used to drive me nuts I'd put some write something down in a pad and it might be a telephone number it might be something that I've observed or a a memory that had come up that was relevant to the divorce process I couldn't remember what it was I couldn't find where it written down which is one of the reasons that I put this is I've put in here everything to help you get the divorce that works for you and I've also got this section in there that helps you negotiate because one of my biggest things was people walking away and fighting because the wound gets involved in this divorce process and this is why divorcing emotionally is key. I realised there was a three-year-old that was running my divorce and at times she'd step in and it was this injustice and it's not fair. I'd put a lot of time, effort, a lot of money and a lot of love and I put my soul into this relationship and all of a sudden it was taken away and I was had nothing. Literally was left with nothing. Now, how is that fair? And I'd been promised this fake future that it looked like somebody else was stepping into. And all of a sudden, these wounds of injustice were the ones that were running my divorce. So that's why for me, divorcing emotionally, finding out and discovering who it is that's running your divorce or what it is. So mine was a wound of injustice. Once I had tracked that down and healed that, I healed the inner child. I, I was in a much better position to negotiate. But guess what? It'd all been done by that point it was all over and done with and this is why it's key to understand and process and understand what is going on and who is in charge I've seen so many people spend hundreds of thousands of pounds and dollars on divorces and my biggest thing was I don't want your wound a childhood wound like say mine was injustice let's use mine fighting for something that you're later going to think that cost me 10 grand that cost me 25,000 but just that bit alone, not the whole divorce, just that bit alone, because people get caught up. When something's important to you, an emotionally abusive person will hone in on that and they will realise. And that is why the negotiation that I've put in the book, I say, don't share this with anybody, even with your legal team, until you know what they want from the divorce, what they're looking for. You can bet if your children are really important to you, they will want access to those children more than they had when they were living in the same house. They will become super parent. You might have solo parented up until this point, but all of a sudden, this is really important to you. It's going to be really important to me. It's really hard, particularly with children, to pretend that you're not interested, pretend that you want this 50-50 split. Or it's really hard to pretend that's actually going to work for you because when you all you really want to do is protect your children from the person that's been abusing you and protect them from the energy and the vibration and the negative negativity that they've lived under, protect them from all that they've witnessed, all they've heard, all they've seen, the way that you've been spoken to, the way that you've been treated. You just want to scoop them up and run away with them and protect them. But if the abuser knows that, that's what they're going to hone in on. It might be that you have two cars in the family. One of them's really nice. The other one's, you know, a little run around and you run to the station and back. It might be that you can turn around and say, okay, you can have the nice car. I'll have the this car. My exchange is this. You're forcing them into a position to make a decision. Are they willing to give up one night or day contact with the children for a nicer car. That's just one example. My biggest thing was, you know, my wound of injustice, was it going to fight for something that was going to cost me more money and more energy? And one of the examples I gave is, say you've got a really expensive painting that was given to you, or you've got a tea set that was gifted to you, an heirloom that comes through the family. Are you going to fight for this picture just because you want it and you know that it won't mean anything to them? And then you come out of it 
get and think, do you know that negotiation cost me £5,000? And I hate that picture because every time I look at that picture, it reminds me of what I went through. So that's just one example. You know, an heirloom that's been in your family for generations and generations, you can bet your life they have got their eye on it and they will make you fight for it. So this is about being savvy with what you want and knowing what they want because I can tell you now, you know more than you think you know. And it's such an interesting process. One example I've got with my first ex-husband was I had a big bonus at work. I went out and I bought a very large TV with surround sound. I'm going back a long time and bought a new DVD player. When we separated, he kept it. And I was okay with that because I wanted out of the relationship. I felt that it was going to be an easy option for me. It was something that I was prepared to let go. What I should have done was negotiated better with that and that be my lever into something else. What he did was provide me with a small portable television for the children to watch and in the end I managed to get a slightly larger one nothing on the scale of what I'd left in that property the experience that I've got in these different situations helped me look at this information that you need look at the way that you negotiate afterwards and know that these wounds can get us into trouble because they got me into trouble so divorcing emotionally is where you step into your power and then knowing your worth, the return on investment. You invested a lot into that relationship. Look at what you want from it and write down to dotting the I's and crossing the T's if you've got children together. Right at the beginning, while you've got all this going on and you're paying these li- this legal team, write everything down with regard to who's going to see them at Christmas and how you're going to split birthdays and what the divide is going to be, You know how you're going to work it. And one thing that I I took away, which I wish I'd known, and I gift this to you now, if you do have children and you're going through that divorce process, is please, please, please put in negotiation dates into the agreement that you've got for the children. Because I found at certain ages, their needs were different. And everything that came back to me was this is what you wanted and this is what we agreed. Now, you know, we've come on 10 years and someone who's seven and is now 17 has got different needs and yet you're still treating them of a seven-year-old. So put in whether it's ages that, you know, you're going to review it every year, particularly when they're young or whether you review it every three years or something like that. But make sure that's written down. If you don't need to renegotiate, that's absolutely perfect. But you've got this opening. You can open this conversation up because it was in that contract. And that's another thing to look at this as a contract. It's a negotiation now. It isn't two people. It's a contract and it should be seen and viewed and dealt with in that way. You've got to remove the emotions and the focus has to be on duty of care. Duty of care to yourself and duty of care to your children if you have them. And duty of care to yourself is making sure that you get what you deserve from that relationship but also making sure that it isn't a wound that's running that divorce and costing you more money than you need to spend. And then the last section or two thirds of the book after I've put in the checklist and you've got a financial overview, which will help you. It's a two way process. One, it helps you look at your money, but two, it also helps you think when you've got their financial statement through going, oh, that's a bit odd. Why aren't they spending any money on food? That's a bit odd. Why are they only buying fuel? That's a bit weird. Why are they spending so much on entertainment or things like that? So you can see it might be that they're spending is higher than the what they're saying they are. You can look at it and think, hmm, there must be an additional income here or they're overdrawn, but their bank statements don't I- indicate that that's the situation. So where's the extra money coming from? Why isn't it showing up? After we've done all that, I've also got in the back, as I have with Finding Lily, as I have with the A to Z of Emotional Abuse, a section for healing. And this is a practical guide to support your healing journey. There's things like journaling, writing, breaking the trauma bond. Oh, so many different things in that. I've even included not the whole book, but a section of the A to Z 
emotional abuse. So I've condensed some of the terms to help you understand, understand and process and remind yourself that this was an abusive relationship. These people will still be manipulating. They'll be just doing it with a smile on their face. They will love the attention they get from this process. They will love seeing you upset. That is why it's crucial to divorce emotionally. I hope this week's been helpful. I'll put some links below. I'll put the YouTube video on return on investment. I'll also put the link to my course that I'm running on the 7th of September on how to talk to your wounds and have honest conversations that will transform your healing, transform your life. And that's what it's all about. It's about knowing that you're in this chrysalis and yeah, you might be emotional. This is your glute stage where everything's breaking down. But just remember what comes out the other end. As long as nobody breaks you open, you will transform into the most amazing butterfly. And you might need to take a bit of time to rest and recuperate and heal a bit more before you can flap your wings and fly away. Sending you loads and loads of love until next time.